Today we continue with respect for persons and their goods under the Eighth Commandment, you shall not steal. I remind you that we are reading from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Article 2407 says, In economic matters, respect for human dignity requires the practice of the virtue of temperance so as to moderate attachment to this world's goods. So we must never fall in love with the riches of the world and material possessions of the world. We must also have respect for the goods of others. Article 2409 says, Even if it does not contradict the provisions of civil law, any form of unjustly taking and keeping the property of others is against the seventh commandment. Thus, deliberate retention of goods lent or objects lost, business fraud, paying unjust wages, forging, forcing up prices by taking advantage of the ignorance or hardship of another, also known as price gouging, and something which has come up during this lockdown period, both in America and in South Africa, and I'm sure across the world. Important, the following are also morally illicit. Speculation in which one country contrasts to manipulate the price of goods artificially in order to gain an advantage to the detriment of others. We think about the manipulation of the gold price and diamonds. Corruption in which one influences the judgment of those who make decisions according to law. Appropriation and use for private purposes of the common goods of an enterprise. Work poorly done. Tax evasion. Forgery of checks and invoices. Excessive expenses and waste. Think of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure that we record in this country and willfully damaging private or public property, think of all the schools that have been vandalized during this lockdown period, is contrary to the moral law and requires reparation. And sometime in the future we will be dealing with reparation because reparation is both important and um, it has effect. Article 2410 says, Promises must be kept and contracts strictly observed to the extent that the commitments made in them are morally just. So obviously a contract that is not morally just, like a contract to assassinate somebody or to kill somebody, uh, would not be enforceable in law. All contracts must be agreed to and executed in good faith. So not under duress um, or by blackmailing somebody virtually. Article 2411 goes on to say, contracts are subject to commutative justice in accordance with a strict respect for their rights. I now read articles 2412. In virtue of commutative justice, reparation for injustice committed requires the restitution of stolen goods to their owner where those stolen goods have been consumed, um, then the equivalent. Jesus blesses Zacchaeus for his pledge. If I defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. So where you steal, you restore fourfold. If you steal a hundred rand, you pay back four hundred rand. Those who directly or indirectly have taken possession of the goods of another, obliged to make restitution of them, or to return the equivalent in kind or in money if the goods have disappeared, as well as the profit or advantages the owners would have legitimately obtained from them. So it's consequential losses as well. Likewise, all who in some manner have taken part in a theft or have knowingly benefited from it, for example, those who ordered it, assisted in it or received the stolen goods, are obliged to make restitution in proportion to their responsibility and to their share of what was stolen. 2413 Games of chance, card games, etc., or wages are not in themselves contrary to justice. They become morally unacceptable when they deprive someone of what is necessary to 
provide for his needs and those of the others. I remember from my childhood um, where we played poker dice and we played in such a way so as to increase our chances of success um, two or three players against one player and um, a child coming with his money for his physical training t-shirt and uh, we managed to win that 27 rand off him and he was unable to go home with the t-shirt his dad had given him the money for so uh, yeah for that may the lord forgive us the passion for gambling risks become an enslavement unfair wagers and cheating at games constitute grave matter unless the damage inflicted is so slight that the one who suffers it cannot reasonably consider it significant so if you're playing a casual card game with your friends where you're playing for cents not rands and you cheat it's all in good spirit i'm sure article 2414 the seventh commandment forbids acts or enterprises that for any reason, selfish or ideological, commercial or totalitarian, lead to the enslavement of human beings, to their being bought, sold and exchanged like merchandise, in disregard for their personal dignity. It is a sin against the dignity of persons and their fundamental rights to reduce them by violence to their productive value or to a source of profit. St. Paul directed a Christian master to treat his Christian slave no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, both in the flesh and in the Lord. And so we can be asked to do that too for our employees. Respect for the integrity of creation. The seventh commandment enjoins respect for the integrity of creation. Animals like plants and inanimate beings are by nature destined for the common good of past, present and future humanity. Use of the mineral, vegetable and animal resources of the universe cannot be divorced from the respect for moral imperatives. I say that again. Use of the mineral, vegetable and animal resources of the universe cannot be divorced from respect for moral imperatives. Man's dominion over inanimate and other living beings granted by the Creator is not absolute. It is limited by concern for the quality of life of his neighbor including generations to come. It requires a religious respect for the integrity of creation. And we think of how big corporations pollute um, the environment and the communities in which they operate for the sake of profit. Animals are God's creatures. He surrounds them with his providential care. Remember that through Jesus all things were created. So Jesus is in every creation. By their mere existence they bless him and give him glory. Thus men owe them kindness. We should recall the gentleness with which saints like St. Saint Francis of Assisi or St. Philip Neri treated animals. If you don't know about St. Francis, look him up today. St. Francis of Assisi, A-S-S-I-S-I. God entrusted animals to the stewardship of those whom he created in his own image. Hence it is legitimate to use animals for food and clothing. They may be domesticated to help man in his work and leisure. Medical and scientific experimentation on animals is morally acceptable practice if it remains within reasonable limits and contributes to caring for or saving human lives. Personally, I don't approve. Final article, Article 2418. It is contrary to human dignity to cause animals to suffer or to die needlessly. It is likewise unworthy to spend money on them that should as a priority go to the relief of human misery. This is the view of the church, that it is likewise unworthy to spend money on animals that should as a priority go to the relief of human misery. One can love animals, one should not direct to them the affection due only to persons. Also on that previous point, um, where we redirect food, grains that are meant for people, and we then use them to feed animals, and where the grain might feed me and give me nutrition for 10 rand a kilogram, I now produce meat with that grain by feeding it to animals and then selling it to people for 100 rand a kilogram which they can ill afford and hence they go hungry. So that was Article 2418, the last in the series of Respectful Persons and Their Goods. And next we will be discussing the social doctrine of the church insofar as thou shalt not steal. I thank you for your time and God bless.